All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Conqueror and Commander, uh, gratefully presented to you by PureMTGO.com. Today I'm going to be talking about a deck I used or created uh, revolving and using Chorus of the Conclave as the commander. Um, I've been sort of on a kick again recently uh, using underused or not so hot commanders to build around, and Chorus uh, meets that requirement. I I think I've seen one or two other people play Chorus the Conclave in the past three years. The main reason is that Chorus costs eight mana, uh, which is an excessive amount, uh, essentially. Um, I can't really think of any other uh, legendary creatures used as commanders that cost eight uh, that are uh, used with any regularity. And not only does it cost eight mana, but it's got a puny amount of offense with only three power. Uh, but it does have Forest Walk. It's in green, and when you get the Chorus out, you can go ahead and uh, pump your creatures um, using the Chorus's ability. Now, the the first way that I heard about building a Chorus deck was essentially to use as many mana creatures as possible, like Llanowar Elves and all those other little elves that tap for mana. Rush the Chorus out there and then start pumping the crap out of all your little mana dorks and then go into town. You can throw in Doubling Season to help that out, and that's a deck. But I didn't like that idea, mainly because it seemed like Wraths would be a big problem. And as we all like to know, or as we all know, uh, in Commander, Wraths get played a fair amount. So my, my initial thought after that was to actually just go with little protection guys. Um, guys that, uh, once you pumped them up, would be able to get past... Uh, you know, your opponent's defenses. I really liked the idea of using, like, Great Stable Stag, who had two protection abilities, or Guardian of the Guild Pact, um, you know, things like that. Guys that weren't very expensive, that I can pump a ton into and go from there. Uh, my initial version of the deck actually had stuff like Beloved Chaplain and Ariac Champion, and it was poop. The, the deck sucked. You know, when you don't have Chorus out, uh, a lot of these creatures aren't very useful. Um, so I had to rethink things a little bit, and I tried to keep some of that that feel, or at least a couple of those cards in the deck, uh, while um, making the deck better. Uh, you know, Land of War Knights just didn't have the same appeal anymore once I started getting pounded because I had crew meerkats and these guys out there and I didn't have an ability to pump them. Because again, 8 mana is a lot of mana and you're not always going to be able to get that far before you get smashed to smithereens. So the deck ended up becoming a little more good stuffy. Um, you know, but that was in order to just make sure that I survived long enough in order to either get chorus out or to just win with what I got. So obviously since Chorus costs 8 mana and you want to be able to use extra mana to pump all your guys, it's gonna, the deck's going to need a decent amount of ramp. And I got your, pretty much your standard guys here. Um, the two that are big and important are Mana Reflection and Mirari's Wake. Obviously being able to double your mana is going to be very helpful, especially once you get Chorus of the Conclave out. The card that I used for the first time uh, with this deck was Boundless Realms. You know, it, it's essentially like a permanent version of Mirari's Wake for you. Um, it's awesome. I loved it. I loved it every time I drew it. It was just great. Uh, it actually reminds me of the fact that once I got set on this deck and I was all excited about it and I knew I was going to present it to you guys, I saw that Sean McKeon over at, at Star City Games came up with his own Course the Conclave deck and sort of like took the wind out of my sails because I thought I was all cool and special because I was going to be able to show this to you guys. But um, I found that even though we had some overlap in the cards, his, his was a kind of a different version. Uh, I did steal one card from his deck that I didn't already have in mind, and that was Bone Horde, but I'll get into that in a little bit more. But he didn't have Boundless Realms, and I think that is uh, a mistake on his part. Again, because Chorus needs as much mana as possible. Uh, so that's good. With uh, our card draw spells, some of them are pretty standard. Soul of the Harvest, Histrodon. Harmonize Hunter's Insight. Life from the Loam is a grindy card. Uh, you know, I found that every time I put, played it, I was dredging the whole time, and then I, I had these are the different cards that you can get um, back with Life from the Loam. Slippery Cars, Tranquil Thicket, uh, Windswept Heath. You know, if you like doing all the clicking and churning through your deck like that, then you're going to like Life from the Loam. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to... It's not a card I play with a lot, uh, but I figured this one time 
I would use it, and that actually worked well. Uh, Life from the Loam also works well with Nature's Resurgence, which is a card that I played for, with for the first time here as well. Being able to, like, get all those creatures in your graveyard. And on top of that, it's a creature-heavy deck, which means that, you know, you're going to get creatures in your graveyard naturally anyways. Usually means that you're going to come out on top when you cast Nature's Resurgence. Um, it does affect all players, obviously, and my initial thought was Grim Flowering, but Grim Flowering costs like six or seven mana or something like that, and that was just too much for me. I just, I didn't want to pay that much, and I liked being able to pay for, like, Harmonize and get, like, eight cards instead of three. Uh, there are going to be times, however, when there's an, an opponent that has more creatures in their graveyard than you, and that's when Loaming Shaman comes into play. You just shove all their creatures back into their uh, library and then cast Nature's Resurgence and feel happy for being so evil. <laughs> um, I really had, uh, uh, I really enjoyed using Nature's Resurgence, and that's actually another reason why Bone Horde works so well. Again, you're going to be putting your own creatures in the graveyard with Life from the Loam and from just natural death, so Bone Horde's going to be good too. The uh, destruction is all pretty standard stuff Oblivion Stone, Strip Mine, it's another Life from the Loam card. Uh, some Blast Angel, Austere Command. Soltari Visionary is great because, um, you know, it's essentially unblockable. It works really well once you get Chorus out there. Uh, I'm kind of in love with the card now. Stone Cloakers, a great, more Graveyard Hate. Uh, Path to Exile and Source of Plowshares are pretty much required. Uh, Ulvenwald Tracker, you're, a lot of times you're going to have bigger creatures than anybody else, and Repeatable Creature Kill is good. Scavenging Ooze, again, more Graveyard Hate. Beast Within, I noted that uh, sometimes I'd have trouble with Planeswalkers, uh, especially if people had good defenses up, and so Beast Within was good at being able to deal with Planeswalkers. These other guys are pretty standard. Uh, a decent amount of Recursion stuff here. Uh, Sun Titan is just solid. Uh, Eternal Witness Genesis. Creeping Renaissance. My first time playing with this card, I liked it because it had flashback. The one limitation is that it has to be a permanent that you're getting back, which means that you can't get back instants or sorceries. Luckily, you, you usually have like a lot of creatures, or you can get some artifacts back or something like that. And it usually works out well. I think there was only one time when I really wanted to be able to get back like instance or something, and I couldn't use it. Uh, but other than that, uh, I liked that you could flash it back in case it did get dredged. Uh, finally, Ameria. Um, I think I activated this, like, or I got this running, like, 40 or 50 percent of the time that it was out there. Uh, and when it was when it was working, it worked awesome. So it's just worth it just to have it in there. Um, tutors, Court of Calling, you know, Instant Speed Tutor. It's like when people attack you and you flash out Sunblast Angel. People don't like that. Survival is really good. You should play it. Enlightened Tutor. Um, there's only, like, three enchantments in the deck, uh, but there are a couple of different um, artifacts as well, so uh, those are all, those are good to get. Academy Rector, again, usually gets a mana doubler or, or sometimes survival. Um, Stoneforge Mystic, there's like four different pieces of equipment in here, so you're usually pretty good to go. Ranger of Eos, there's there's three different uh, targets for the Ranger, um, one of which we already talked about, which was uh, Wall Tractor, or Tracker, and then there's Scoop Mob and Sarah Ascendant. Um, all those guys are good. Um, I thought about trying to get a fourth one-mana creature out there, like uh, Mother of Runes or something like that, but I just couldn't find the room. So uh, usually I had plenty of targets for the Ranger, and he worked well. Bone Horde is big. Behemoth Sledge is Life Leak and Trample. I liked Bone Horde especially because it basically acted as another creature, and then once somebody wrathed, you just attach it to your next creature that you cast, and you're good to go. Over here we have our random stompers, uh, which include the, rem the remnants of my protection idea. The protection guys were basically Chameleon Colossus, Mirren Crusader, Crusader, because again it's got double strike and it's got protection from two different colors. Commander Isha, which is just a solid card in general. Baneslayer Angel. Um, so those are all good cards. Silverblade Paladin, double strike's good. Sigarda was awesome. This is my first time playing with her. And, uh, you know, when people play Grave Pact and stuff like that, and you get Sigarda out there, it just it wrecks their day. And, you know, uh, she was just good. You know, she's a 5-5 five, five flyer for 5 with Hexproof, which means that you put Bone Horde on her and you just go to town on people. Uh, Forgotten Ancient is in here from, like, an extremely er ver early version of the deck where 
I was playing with more creatures like Fertilid and stuff like that that, that needed plus one plus one counters. But I found that a lot of those creatures were really slow, uh, and or they weren't very good without um, without the chorus out there. And again, chorus. You know, I'll be honest. Like I about half my games, I never even cast chorus. She cost too much, and you'd be doing a bunch of other stuff with your mana. And um, you know, it, you'd, or you'd cast her once, she'd die, and then you would never cast her again. Eight mana is a lot of freaking mana. Um, so that's just what ended up happening for the most part. And then over here, we got um, lands for use with Life from the Loam. The uh, rest of the mana base is pretty standard. We got one sack outlet, one way to pump your dudes, and then Windbrisk Heights and uh, Moss War Bridge. Um, the Heights, I didn't really activate too often, but, you know, it occasionally worked, and it's always nice to get free stuff. So that's the deck. Uh, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to sit back and, like, wait for the game to develop. I'd rather just get out there and start attacking. Usually. I mean, there are exceptions to that rule. But, you know, this deck is nice and offensive, and um, it, you know, it does some, some fun stuff. Uh, it, it's essentially a mana ramp slash good stuff deck. It's not quite what I was going for when I started, but in order to make the deck competitive enough to actually show you guys and win some games, uh, this is kind of how it ended up. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the overview. Make sure and take a look at the article for the actual deck list, and hopefully I can get you guys some games, alright? Uh, we'll be seeing you shortly.